all right hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you I hope my voice is coming good and clear please invite your friends and let us uh, do just another day of exposing what it's called the amazing cult of Islam <clears throat> uh, last Friday we have a Muslim uh, Sheikh uh, who have a PhD from al -Azhar University and I found actually he have his book uh, you know the uh, University of uh, Saudi Arabia is using his book to, to explain the Quran but this is for English version you know it's not accepted by obviously by the scholars it's accepted to deceive uh, those who don't speak Arabic uh, if you notice last time we spoke uh, we mentioned something about the Prophet of Islam who took an oath uh, on the Torah and uh, Dr. Ruhi uh, who is a sheikh he said well the Prophet he did not mean that book and this is what we always mention to you that Muslims are not people who you think they are if a Muslim cleric a sheikh who he is responsible for every word he say because remember uh, you know in Islamic countries if you say something against Islam especially if it's going to harm the Prophet this person can be you know there is a consequence of this very harsh ones so when the Muslim they say to us that the Prophet he took an oath but he don't mean that oath isn't it he telling you that our Prophet was a liar when they say <clears throat> that the Prophet he took an oath in a book Yes, his hand was in the book, but he don't mean that book. Yes, he said to that book, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, but he don't mean thee or the one who sent thee. And when we said to him, so you are confirming that your prophet was using taqiyya. He said, no, but he don't mean, he mean different book. Imagine I go to your court or, you know, to your place. And then I, I said to you, okay, bring me your Bible or your Quran. And then I put my hand on it and I place my hand there and I say I believe in thee and the one who sent thee and then later you ask me so you believe in the Quran I say no I meant something else obviously this is nothing but a deception and Islam is based on deception and this is why uh, my book is called the deception of Allah so when we when we name the book the deception of Allah it was not for no reason it was a very for a very strong reason for this is a cult based on deception the Prophet of Islam himself as we showed you and the scholars of Islam they accepted that their Prophet was lying when he took an oath and he was taking an oath voluntarily like not somebody forcing him to want to kill him so he took an oath just to protect himself from something no uh, so when the Muslims try to defend their prophet and bringing us very funny stupid you know like uh, excuses I find it hilarious and when we say to them about the Torah and the Bible the Sheikh he said oh Allah did not send the Torah and the Bible but the Quran confirmed that that Allah he sent the Torah and the Bible by the way we don't agree with them that the Torah and the Bible is coming from Allah anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> thank you very much for saying that but imagine how much terrified they are now to say that yes is sent by Allah because the question is so clear if this is the book of Allah how come Allah could not protect it and if Allah he sent a message to Isa where is this message of Isa it doesn't matter if you say it's the Torah or the gospel or it's not where is the message of Isa where is the message of Musa what kind of God he sent messages and he could not protect or it even recover his message this God obviously is suffering from issues please invite your friends I don't see many people here maybe Monday is not a good day uh, I thought most of you work in a haircut business where is everybody hmm all right so today we have a topic which is why the Quran says ask not questions the Muslim they start giving you excuses saying oh some silly people they start asking questions oh some silly people they start saying things asking the Prophet what will happen to my parent tomorrow what will happen to my mom tomorrow 
that is a false excuse you see here the, the verse saying it clearly that those answers if he answer you will make you lose your faith chapter 5 verse 101 and this is a translation made by the Abdul hey, by the way one of you he sent me a, a picture hold on uh, they are selling a shirt have my name in it I think in South Africa <laughs> that's in <new>. you <laughs> and there is other one hold on what is the other one uh, the other one is even more funny hold on where is the other one yeah the other one is hilarious okay this is the other one I don't know if you can read the text in the shirt or not. Hmm? <clears throat> I have no idea who is the one who did that, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a very. And when I saw that, like, what I said to myself, "What the heck?" <laughs> oh boy! Anyway. <clears throat> Any Abdul? Yeah, actually, uh, one of you he suggest in uh, in Patreon. He said, "Why you don't put like uh, what the heck? Are you sure?" <laughs> Any Abdul? <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, it was kind of funny, and uh, actually, the one who sent it to me from South Africa. I don't know what you know. I mean, I don't know what uh, what's happening, but. <laughs> Uh, good for them make money who why not I don't hear you know that people make a uh, make money who care I mean nothing wrong you see if if somebody if you buy something and you like it and you made a decision right so let us say this person he made those shirts I mean who was forcing you to buy it unless you like it okay so he made you happy you make him happy everybody's happy and we love uh, <clears throat> Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, but you know the Muslim they learned when I say are you sure it's mean there is something is coming <laughs> So like they get more very uh, very careful. Are you sure? <laughs> uh oh, he just said that it's mean there is something don't say that so I I, I, I should have changed the, the you know the secret uh, uh, Word like are you sure but anyway we cannot we cannot replace any Abdul because we cannot find something to replace that. I mean, who is any Abdul? I mean, who, how you can uh, forget about uh, the Abdul? And the funny, the Muslim, they say to you, I am not Abdul. I mean, what do you mean talking about? You know, all of you, you saw, you say that you are the slave of Allah. Actually, in the other day, there was a movie, uh, and uh, one of the guys who they are in actors in the movie, his name is Abdul. <laughs> his official name is Abdul. Let me log in in my. Um, in Skype, <clears throat> all right. So, in case any Abdul would like to call, in case, <clears throat> uh, anyway, guys, just to remind you for those who got my book, uh, The Deception. Uh, sorry, uh, see, because you have now we have many books, uh, the uh, six and Allah. If you have my if you did read the book, not only have it, uh, don't forget to please to make a review of the book, uh, of volume number one and volume number two. If you finish both, or if you finish one, you know, do whatever you finished. Uh, the review is very important, and be sure to have an uh. An honest review we don't do what the Muslims do say what you like say what you don't like um, same for those who have my other books uh, and you did not make a review please you know will not take you too long to make a review in Amazon um, doesn't matter what language you have my book in uh, if you have it in French or in German or etc uh, 
and you know actually i appreciate it if you guys those who speak french and those who speak german and those who speak dutch and speak uh, uh swedish if you can tell your friends about uh, my books in those languages because as you know all the people who come here they are people who speak english but for sure between you some people who speak other languages and they can help us to tell people about our books and we appreciate that now we go back to our topic any abdul if we go to the quran and we read together the following verse Oh, who you believe, ask not questions about things which is me if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. Okay. You see, if you go and see the Muslim inter interpretation, they will say to you, Oh, some people they are asking the Prophet silly questions. Uh, what would happen to my father? To, you know, is my father going to go to hell? Is my etc. This those will not make it cause of trouble because Muhammad he can answer saying only Allah knows. I mean, Allah knows best. That's it. What what is the trouble? <clears throat> Where is the trouble in that? Actually, the verse is followed by a verse, and that verse get Islam to be exposed. It says here, because some people before you did ask such questions, and on that account lost their faith. So those kind of questions will make you leave Islam. Asking about what will happen tomorrow to my father will not make me leave. Because of a prophet, he can give me a logical answer. He says, God only knows what would happen tomorrow. God only knows what happened to your parents. God, you know, there is a there is things, there is no human being can claim that he know them. <clears throat> but those are questions. If you get the answer for them, you will lose your faith. You will be in trouble. So why those questions will make a person in trouble? As you see, any question we give about Islam, no Muslim can answer it. Islam immediately is in trouble. Starting from the first page in the Quran to the last page in the Quran. And I challenge any Muslim to choose for me a page in the Quran is not going to put the Quran in trouble. And the author of the Quran in trouble. Why is that? What is the problem? Why this prophet, he is giving a verse from his God saying, shut them up, don't let them ask questions. You see, in different verse in the Quran, <clears throat> Muhammad, when people, they start asking him questions, questioning him, questioning him, he considered them silly people. In Arabic, he called them as sufaha. As sufaha is somebody is stupid, silly, you know, like you know. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, and look like th this was an accusation between both the Muslims and non-Muslims. So in chapter two, verse thirteen, when Muhammad he said to them, "Believe in Islam," they say, "Are we going to believe the same as those silly, stupid ones, the fool ones?" So the Arab at the time of Muhammad, they called the ones who believe in Islam a fool. As you see in the Quran in front of you. The one who believe in Islam in a fool. Muhammad in respond, he come with the verse using the same statement. Uh, in chapter 2, verse number 142, when the Arabs start making fun of the, of, of the madman Muhammad, because this guy, one day he pray, Toward the, uh, uh, Jerusalem, the second day he prayed toward Mecca. I mean, which day, which which direction is your direction? Is the Kaaba is the holy? Is it Jerusalem? Is the eh. so the fool among the people will say, "What has turned them from the Qibla to which they were to use to pray?" Say to Allah, belong both east and west. <laughs> okay, question: If to Allah belong the east and the west. Why you are praying to the south? <laughs> because Jerusalem is not in the is not in the west, you idiot, and Mecca is not in the east, you idiot. 
<clears throat> Do you see how stupid this book is? Do you see how stupid this book is? And if it doesn't matter what direction he prayed to, so why he change it? I mean, keep it there. Actually, you can search, by the way. <clears throat> Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country in the world, was praying to the wrong direction of the Kaaba. They were praying to Libya. You believe it? Indonesia, Pakistan, those countries. Just a few years ago, they discovered they were praying wrong. So for the last 1,000 years, those poor Muslims, they are praying to the wrong Kaaba, to al Qazafi. They were praying to Africa. Hmm? The Christians play part of forming Islam. Everybody there play part. Muhammad is just trying to adjust himself. Muhammad is the same as a lizard. You know those lizards who change their color when they walk in a rock. Muhammad is this kind. When between he's the same as Obama. Obama between the Jew, he wear the hat of the Jew. He pray in the front of the wall of the Jew in the temple of the Jew. He write a paper for in the in the in the in the uh, temple wall. Uh, when he speak to the Christians, he prays the Bible. And when he speak to the atheists, he make fun of the Bible. When he speak to the Muslims, he's a Muslim. This, Muhammad is exactly Obama. He is a lizard. Chameleon, whatever you call it. So this person have no color. He change. He adopt. You remember the story of the satanic verses? The satanic verses, it's what? It's Muhammad was a praying between a bunch of Arab who praise the three daughters of Allah. He thought nobody would know what he was doing. So he bowed down to them and he prayed. When he was reciting the chapter of Najm, he inserted a sentence saying that the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must and we need to pray for them. And then he bowed down and the infidels, supposedly, they bowed down with him. The news spread. And Muhammad now in trouble because he been exposed. He got busted because people start saying how he was saying yesterday that this should not be happening. And today he is praising them and praying for them. So Muhammad, he claimed that Allah, he will take those verses from his mouth because shaitan, he put them there. It's not me, shaitan. No. So... Uh, <clears throat> here... The Arabs start making fun of Muhammad for this guy. He changed his direction. And you know, imagine here, by the way, like West and East, West and East. If we open the map, if we open the map, how in the world Allah, he come with this? Let me show you. I don't want to open the map, but you are forcing me, guys. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> any Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should open uh, Google Earth. I don't know. Hold on. <clears throat> Stupidity is amazing. All right. We will try to zoom in. Because if I open, uh, you know, uh, Google Earth, it takes too much memory and slow the internet. All right. Guys, this is Muhammad. <clears throat> this is Muhammad. Let us close this thing here. Mm. Watch with me and see the stupidity of the author of the Quran. And I'm not insulting when I say the stupidity. It's obvious. What is the direction of the east and what is the direction of the west in this map? Uh, let me see if we can get uh, a compass here. There is a compass. Uh, no compass. Where you can activate a compass in this map? No. Mm, maybe we need to use Google, uh, you know. But anyway, it, the, 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 the issue is very simple. You know, me, myself, I am from the Middle East, and we know how the map is. <clears throat> the, 
This is the East. Like you go to war China, etc. This is the East. So let us draw an arrow toward the East. This is the East. You can be here, you can be here, it doesn't matter. You are, you know, like there is a southeast, there is a northeast, but exactly the east is this one. Oh, sorry, this direction. <clears throat> so if you are in this point, and Muhammad here is in the city of Al Medina, let us zoom out of the map a little bit. He is. In a city of Al Medina, all right, that's perfect. So, Muhammad is here in this location. Let us make a let us make a circle here, make it big. Muhammad is here. And this is Mecca and this is Jerusalem how this became the East and the West if there is any Muslim want to tell me this is the East and this is the West Sorry, we need to make the arrow go there. As simple as that. So if Muhammad is here in this location, when he pray toward Jerusalem, he is praying to the north. If he is a praying toward Mecca, he is a praying to let us say south. Uh, you know, not exactly south, south, like south, a little bit uh, southwest. How Allah is God, but he yet he make a stupid mistake like this. We do not know the direction where Muhammad is praying to. Do we have any Abdul in the text? You cannot see Mecca? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me take this thing off. Even the dog is saying I cannot see Mecca. I heard him from outside. You see it now? So how Allah, he says that for him, he is the, you know, he, if, uh, 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 the uh, he prayed to the west or to the east is a matter. He is not praying neither to the east or the west. <laughs> this is why all of them they have the same time. You know, if you if you are in Mecca, if you are in Jerusalem, it's the same time. You know what I mean? The same timing is no, no different. So here you will see a very clear mistake. However, the Arab at the time of Muhammad, they were making fun of him because obviously this guy is very silly and very stupid. If he is a person who is praying to his God and his God told him to pray to Jerusalem, what make you pray now to the Kaaba? Was it the Kaaba? Or the Kaaba was always the pray place for the pagan before Islam. So why Muhammad, he changed direction? Very simple. For years, Muhammad was trying to convince the Jews that he is a Jew like them. The same he tried to convert the Christians to say to them, I am a Christian prophet like you. I believe in Isa. But when he gave up, that neither the Christians, neither the Jews will accept him as a prophet. So what is the need of Jerusalem? The Jews rejected me. The Christians rejected me. Let me go back to my roots, which is the Kaaba. And this is what happened here exactly. 
he changed direction for he is a false prophet and if the verse in the Quran is telling the truth we have a guy his name uh, Clark hey Clark why you don't call me my friend he's a Muslim and he's getting excited call me tell me what is the story actually the one who changed the direction of the Kaaba is not even Allah is not even Muhammad who remember anyone remember who is the one the real one who was behind the change of the Kaaba direction who remember anyone the one who remember who I'm going to give you a one-way ticket to Afghanistan and you will stay in five stars hotels of Taliban Omar thank you Travis Travis Brad he is the one who get the answer it was Omar al-Khattab Omar al-Khattab is the one who said my God he agreed with me in three one of them is the direction of the prayer <laughs> What's wrong with this religion? And this guy is saying to me, liar. Hello, are you sure? Are you sure I am the liar? Okay, here we go. This is my challenge for you. As long as you are accusing me to be the liar. Any Abdul? Any Abdul would like to call? Any Abdul would like to call huh, and get me busted. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is a shirt I think is sold in South Africa. Somebody sent me the pictures. They are selling shirts. It says any Abdul. You believe it? But I thought I have a copyright over this. I mean, even this is not fair. They are using my brand. <laughs> <laughs> honestly when I open my Facebook and I look at this like I was laughing like dying from laughing like what the <laughs> oh boy all right are you an Egyptian look 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 guys look what we are talking about look what the Muslims talking about are you an Egyptian my friend if I am an Egyptian if I am a Somalian if I am I am a black a blonde African-American from Japan what's your business I want an answer for this what kind of God he says he is the Lord of the East and the West it doesn't matter what direction you pray to but Muhammad is not praying neither to the West and neither to the East and why Muhammad he keeps changing direction what's the problem I'm not the one is saying those shirts guys I don't know just somebody sent me those pictures I don't know who are, who, who are they I have no idea what they are sold and I don't care I lie why I lie guys I lie what, what what is the lie I just said look at the Muslim how what, how silly this statement what is the lie I just said hmm? tell me <clears throat> why you don't call me right now and get me busted with the lie what do you say are you willing to call me Hmm? Hmm. Okay, potato. We continue. Then we go. The Arab making fun of Muhammad and his religion. It's not what the Muslim they say to us. Do you see, do you remember the Muslim they say to you that the Arab they were amazed of Muhammad Quran, amazed of the Prophet. They are calling him silly and fool, the one who believe in Muhammad. Do you see it? And they have reasons. This guy he is a madman. He keeps changing the direction of the prayer. I challenge the Muslims to tell me why he was praying to Jerusalem. Give me a reason. What is in Jerusalem? His God? What is that? Let us continue. Then <clears throat> we go to the different verse and we will find 
the following let us see what is it <coughs> I hate it when you type in Arabic and then you find yourself typing in English. In chapter 4, verse 140 in the Quran, it says that already has he sent you the word in the book what a book Muhammad never received a book since when when you hear the signs of Allah held in the, the defense and ridicule you you are not to sit with them unless they turn to a different topic so Allah is saying to the Muslims when somebody like Christian Prince start getting Islam busted don't sit with them until they change the topic. If they start talking about hummus, falafel, you sit with them. As long as they are laughing at the stupidity of your prophet, you don't sit with them. Is that true? <clears throat> Is that true, Muslims? They excuse you are they are making fun of your prophet. They are making fun. That's mean they are accusing your prophet. You why you want to run? Answer them. Why you don't answer them? Why you don't answer them? Somebody is saying your prophet is false. Answer him. If somebody said to me your Bible is corrupt, I'm just going to leave. No. Uh, your Jesus killed himself. I'm going to leave. No. Maybe he's mocking. So what? answer him but because you Muslims have no answer your God have no answer Muhammad have no answer and let me prove it to you anyone remember when the Christians they challenged Muhammad they came all the way from Ethiopia the Christians from Ethiopia they came all the way from there to debate Muhammad anyone remember what Muhammad did to escape the debate who remember In chapter 3, verse 61, the Christians, they came to Muhammad, challenging him to debate. He said, uh, Allah told me, in the dispute of this matter with thee, with this matter about what? About Jesus. I mean, those guys are not making fun. They are bishops. They are not just anyone. They are the real Christians. The scholars and look at the coward what he did if anyone dispute in this matter with thee now after full knowledge has come to thee, full knowledge but you cannot answer them I mean the full knowledge came to him but yet he cannot answer a question say come let us together together our sons and your sons our women and your women Ourself and yourself. Da -da 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 I mean, what the heck? This is a prophet of God, and this is God talking. This is how you want to refute somebody. When you hear the beginning says bring and come, you would think he is inviting them for a debate. You know what I mean? You might think that this guy, oh okay, it's getting hot now. The prophet is going to start a debate with those Christians yeah no my friend the coward he will not debate them he is inviting them for a cursing party have you ever heard of a prophet do such a thing cursing party so he said to them if anyone in dispute Allah told me you see, I wish to debate you, but Allah told me this. If anyone did, you know, uh, uh, came to, dis to dispute, to debate with you about this topic, about what? About Isa, about Jesus. After the knowledge came to thee, uh, have, he have the knowledge, but he have no answers. 
tell them, come, come, come to daddy. Let us gather together, our sons and your sons. But those are bishops, they are not even married. You see how stupid Allah is? Those who came to Muhammad, they are bishops, they don't get married. They don't have a wife, they don't have kids. They are monks. Our women and your women, you idiot, you don't have women. Ourself and yourself, how many are you, Muhammad? Ourself and yourself? And then let earnestly pray and invoke the curse of Allah in the one who or do you lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh buddy unbelievable that's ridiculous it's a cursing party so when you see those muslims today they are going in tv and they want to debate the christians they are not following islam in islam you don't do this if we have shabir ali debating let us say uh sham shamun shabir ali will take the mic he will say may allah May Allah cut my nose and step in my toes if I'm lying. Your turn. And then Sam Shamun he told the mic, he say, May Allah make my hair grow like a tree, like a row, if I'm lying. Your turn. Then Shabir Ali he take the mic, he say, May Allah, may Allah make me look like Christian Prince right now if I'm lying. Your turn. Then Sam Shamoon, he take the mic. Okay. May Allah make me uh, suffer from diarrhea if I am lying. Your turn. I mean, what the heck with this party? This is a debate of Allah. This is after Muhammad received the knowledge. We do this. So what the knowledge for? Let me close close the window. This uh, dog outside is a is a is a kafir dog. I mean, uh, there is a dog of the neighbor is making noise. Hold on. Okay, this is better. This is better. So, any Muslim here want to do tell us how smart this debate? I mean, this is fantastic, man. Your God is a genius. This is how we debate. And just to show you how stupid this logic here. Anyone remember, anyone notice here something wrong in this verse? Something very wrong and very stupid. Additional to invite yourself and ourselves and your baby and my baby and your wives and my wives. I don't have wives. So, what I would do now? I don't have kids. What I would do? Anyone, anyone notice something very stupid in this verse? Extremely stupid. Anyone? There is something very stupid in this verse. Especially in the last part of it. Anyone notice? Do you know why this is very stupid? Do you know why this is extremely stupid? First of all, if a Hindu, if a Hindu is debating me and he says to me he believes in his God, whatever his God is, he's not lying. Correct? This is his belief. You know what I mean? If a Jewish guy who don't believe in Jesus say Jesus is not God, he is not lying. He is wrong, according to me. If I say to him Jesus is God, I am not lying. I am wrong, according to him. So the idea of lying is proving that Muhammad is a scam, for he is a liar. He thinks everybody else is a liar. He knew exactly what they are coming for to get him busted, that he's a liar. Otherwise, this should not be a debate about who is lying or let us say cursing party because simply those people who believe in what they believe, they are monks, they are not people in the street, a bunch of kids. 
those are decent people they reserve their life to God so what line is about here but because Islam teach every person to be a liar as we have the Sheikh yesterday Saturday remember he have no problem to lie he was lying left or right all the way I show him the hadith he says something else I show him the tafsir he don't accept the tafsir I show him the scholar he said on the scholars they are wrong you know that we have a new tafsir for the Quran now so they have no shame to lie and because Muhammad is a liar he was speaking about lying same time what kind of God this God he will curse the liar only if he invoke him <laughs> oh boy uh, oh boy I mean Muhammad is super super uh, mm. hello assalamu alaikum Allah wa alaikum assalam uh, my name is a Christian Prince. I would like to invoke on you if I am lying to curse me, please. Sure, sure. What's your name and where you live? And give me your number. Okay, Allah. Let me give you my number. My real name is Shabir Ali. I live in Canada and I am uh, 57 years old. I have a long beard. It's white. I will send you my picture, by the way. So if I am lying, please curse me. All right, sure, sure. I will curse you. What the heck? Sure, I will curse you. Do you want me to curse you a lot or little? <laughs> what kind of God does God? He will not curse you for lying unless you call him and say, "Invoke, I invoke you, Allah, please, I invoke you." If I'm lying, curse, you, curse me, please. I mean, what the heck? This is this is this is this is too much hashish. This is too much hashish. This God is the God of the hashish. Imagine I go all the way to Bangladesh to debate Zakir Naik. And Zakir Naik now in the stage, he's going to debate a Christian prince. And then he says, Brother Tatar, today we are going to do invoke Allah. And the one in line, Allah is going to curse him. And you know what? I invoke Allah to make a Christian prince look like me if he's curtain, if he's lying. And in the morning, Christian Prince, he wake up, he find himself look like Shabir, like 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 Zakir Naik, and I'm talking about his beard. I love his beard. I mean, this guy, he put all kind of fertilizer to grow it. It's not a growing because he's trying to look like a sheikh. I should give him some of my beard, man. I'm sick of it. I shave it in the. I shave it before I sleep. I wake up in the morning. I find it one meter long. What kind of religion this religion is? This is from God. This is from God. What kind of God this God is? So ask no questions. So what we can do? Let us invoke God to curse the one is lying. <laughs> and what if the other party don't want to invoke Allah to curse him if he is lying? Allah will not curse him. Hmm? Hmm. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me so we can do cursing party? Anyone? <clears throat> uh, by the way, we can take any one, any two. I hope I hope I'm not like saying something wrong by saying uh any Muslim if you want me to uh, say any Abdul no problem here we go we have it printed we have shirts it's called any Abdul <laughs> you see the Muslims they love to debate you as long you know nothing The second they notice that you know either they say it's not important or they say it doesn't matter or they say anything but they will never uh, will never answer
אני אבדול? Who is Abdul? Not even one? I want a t-shirt for myself. I don't know where this t-shirt is coming from. Don't ask me if I want to get a t-shirt. <laughs> hey, by the way, you can ask them in the mall to print one for you. I think they have like, you know, there's some malls they have like... Uh, they print for you in the spot. Do we have any Abdul want to come and to call us? <clears throat> no, I don't want to sell shirts, my friend. This is not my business. Anyone? Well, this is God debating, cursing. And you know, the most funny thing I find in the Quran, when the Quran says that Allah, Allah is saying that Allah is the all, all wise. <laughs> you guys, isn't it amazing this God, he keep praising himself, speaking about how wise he is, but when he opens his mouth, he says stupid things. The sun set in the murky water, the sun rise in the place where people, they have no cover. Uh, you know, the, the women have a sperm from her ribs. The man have a sperm coming from the backbone. And then the Muslims, they try to make interpretation, try to fix it. They say, no, the sperm is coming from the brain. <laughs> once once a bunch of kids, those, they, they write article like, you know, I forgot their names. Uh, the Wadi, the Wadi, for Wadi, something like this, you know, a bunch of kids. So I made a video and they get so upset. So they decide to make a video to refute me. And then they said, as an example, if you want to understand the Quran, go and read the Imam Ar Razi. Ar Razi? Are, are you sure? Are you sure? So I made a video showing them what Ar Razi, because they are the one who said Ar Razi. Ar Razi said to, to, to explain the Quran about that verse, chapter 86, verse number six and seven. He said that. The sperm is coming from the brain. <laughs> Supposedly, now he fix it. <laughs> oh boy, <clears throat> Islam is pure science. Islam is a pure science. I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. It come from the brain. Hmm. Do we have any brain here? I mean, any Muslim here have a brain? What is your thought about Sheikh Rohi? I made a video for him to debate me. Coward, he will never answer, you know. This guy is a kid. You know? He's a kid. And, you know, the, the, the Shia, they don't get angry by, from him, by the way, they, because they knew he was practicing taqiyah. This guy, he graduated from the school of Qum. Qum is the, is the center of terrorism. All Hezbollah, all the mullahs of uh, Iran, you know, they want to destroy Israel, they want to kill the Jews, they want to kill the Christians. Yeah, yet he says, uh, he say, you know, th those people, they try to fool the Western to show them that not all Islam, because the Western now, Maybe let us say maybe sixty percent of them, because until now there's forty percent of the Western still are crazy and they are in high in drugs. They are stupid, sadly. So they want to show them that they want to confuse you. Like there is too many kind of Islam. There's Islam is a peaceful one, and there's Islam is a violent one. We believe the Islam, the peaceful one, is the is the is the right one, and this is Tawhidi. But the Tawhidi, he will not dare to say that. Um, the mullahs of Iran and the mullahs of Qom they are terrorists too because this is what they teach exactly what the Sunni teach and he will not debate me for very simple reason because if he debate me I'm going to force him to say all the names written about the Shia to be terrorist they start him from Ali 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 himself he burned people alive Ali Ali himself he burned people alive so when this guy he speak about ISIS, why you don't speak about Ali, the one you consider him as God? 
And by the way, those Shia, they believe that Muhammad and his family are not human. In case you do not know, the Shia believe that uh, Muhammad and Ali and Fatima and Al Hassan Al Hussein, five names, they believe they are lights from the forehead of Allah. And Allah, He sent them down to the earth to light the world. If you go, if we go to the hadith, <clears throat> let us see. You see, and the, the funny, the Muslim, they say to you that the Prophet, he ordered not to cut a tree, not to, you know, the Muhammad, he used to burn trees and to, to, to kill and etc. Let us see. Where is the hadith about Ali burning people? Here we go. Do you see it, guys? Do you see it? Ali, he burned, burned some people. And this news reached to Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is the cousin who said, had I been in his place, I would not burn them. As the Prophet said, don't punish anyone with Allah punishment. No doubt, I would have killed them. For the Prophet said, if somebody, a Muslim, disgraced his religion, kill him. So he burned them for what reason? Uh, do you understand what is the reason they are killed for? They are burned for? For they left Islam. So now supposedly Ibn Abbas is nicer. I don't agree with him about burning them. Let us kill them only. <laughs> can Ruhi, can what his name, the Imam Tawheedi, Potato, can he say that Ali is a scumbag, he's a criminal too? Muhammad himself, he said, that a group of Muslims are not coming to pray in the mosque. He, he said, I was almost going to order my army, my men, to bring to bring wood and throw it at the houses of those people who they are not coming to pray and burn them inside their houses. You believe it? Muhammad is the one who started this idea. And they say to you, ISIS is not Islam. You are right. But name for me one thing ISIS did, Islam did not teach. The truth is, not even a single behavior done by ISIS is not Islamic. ISIS are people who they are following the true Islam. This is the truth. And you know, in the world today, everything is upside down. You know, the media, because you see, it's not for the benefit of the Western countries to, to accept the fact that this is Islam. They don't want to believe that because that would be a problem. Then what we would do with the Muslims? So they try to provide you an image that does not exist, fooling you, fooling themselves. Are you telling me that the CIA or the intelligence of, of uh, England, they do not know that this is Islam? No way. Are you telling me that the president of France, he did not get a report from his intelligence for a study what this cult is about? There is no way. I mean, we are in the age of computers. You can get books in a second. You will not find one act ISIS do in any of their videos without quoting what Allah said. And some people will say to you, oh, they are misquoting. My friend, Saudi Arabia, the government you, you accept now as a friend to you, they practice exactly what ISIS do. Until now, they do stoning. They cut hands. They crucify people. And they behead people. Until now, legally, officially. Why you are a bunch of liars, Western government, you don't dare to say the truth. 
how many of you cut relationship with Saudi Arabia none none how many of you cut relationship with the president of Syria who is a dictator I agree he is a criminal I agree <laughs> but at least this guy he don't care for Islam women they can go and join the army if they want they can be a police she can be a doctor she can be engineer she can drive a car she can wear a bikini how come they cut the relationship with this guy? You see, if you, if you notice what's happening in the Middle East, the Western, they have a plan. And the plan is to conquer any country, have a secular government, one after one. They get rid of Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was a secular. No, when Saddam Hussein there, who dare to say I am ISIS or Muslim Brotherhood? Nobody there. Al Qazafi is the same. Al Qazafi, he don't want the Quran. He have his green book. He's have his uh, he have his own Quran. <laughs> one after one, they are trying to replace all the secular government. And this exactly did the same in Egypt. In Egypt, they have Hosni Mubarak. He's a secular president. They replace him with who? The Muslims Brotherhood. All of this done by the help of Obama. Let me answer this guy. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Who is talking to me? Please mute your uh, YouTube. Wait. All right. Who is talking to me, please? My name is uh, my name is Ali, and I want to challenge you if you could read the verse from the Bible. Why you want to challenge me to read the verse from the Bible? What about read the verse from the Quran? No, what about reading the verse from the Bible if you have balls? Uh, what if I don't have balls? Is that will make a difference for you? Do you have balls no, yourself? Do you have balls yourself? I have, I'm just asking you to read. I'm asking you. Do you have Kings, Do you have balls yourself? Kings, do you have a Do you have balls yourself? Second Kings. Do you have balls two, yourself? Blah, blah, blah. Do you have a balls yourself? We are talking. We will read wherever you want. I'm asking you. Do you have balls no. yourself? I'm asking you to. I am asking you. Me. You asked me a question. I answered you. I want an answer. Do you have balls yourself? Okay, I don't have. Why you don't have? What happened? Are you the same as your I'm prophet? Okay, as long as you don't have, that's mean you are the same as the prophet because there is a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the Kothar. Your prophet was accused that he don't have balls and he don't have a penis. Do you agree with that? Can you please read Second Kings? You can read it. Read for me. No problem. But you need to answer me. Is no, it true please, that the Quran please, says that the prophet had no balls? Is it true? I will answer you. Is it true that your prophet was accused that he have no balls? Yes or no? I will answer your question. Well, I, here we go. You are the one who mentioned balls. Obviously, you are trying to change the topic. I, I first asked about Second Kings. You, but you can you, okay read for me you Second King. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. But you, you need to answer me. Go ahead. What Second King says? Second Kings chapter two verse twenty three. So read it for us. If you have the correct. Yeah, yeah. Read it for open us. In, open, open in front of the screen. Well, you know, you know. First, yeah, dude. When I so, when I say to somebody, uh, when I say how, when, how I, when I when how, I say when I say listen listen Abdul. <laughs> when I when I change the Muslim, I read for you what I am saying. Read it for us, Ayat Aslaf. No, re, re, open, open on the screen. We Where will open in the stream. Second King, what? Second Kings, chapter two, verse twenty-three. Open it. Mm -hmm. Why are you afraid? All right. And you will read it for us. <clears throat> let us see screen, let us see who is afraid hold on oh yeah yeah all right read open Second, Second Kings. Kings 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Verse what? And Elijah said unto Elisha, No worry, we read it all. For the Lord hath oh, sent sorry. me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. 
and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed themselves to the yes. ground before him. Listen, Abdul, listen, and they listen, said they laugh at you. Behold now, yeah, yeah, be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord Over hath taken him up, up shut up, and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. For the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. As he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back, and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel. Uh, while you are laughing, Abdul, 
You see, the verse you gave me is a proof that Elijah is a prophet of God. Your God, he cursed the Christian, the Jews, and they never die. He okay. cursed us. Listen, so listen. Let part, me let me show let me show everybody. Let me show everybody. You see, I just showed you. I made you listen to the whole chapter, and you were doomed for listening because because the devil inside you was hurting you. You could not cut shut up, shut up your mouth. Look what happened, guys. <laughs> he is making fun of Elijah. Elijah did not kill anyone. He cursed them for insulting. And the Bible is speaking clearly in the Old Testament that those who so insult the, oh, shut up, God. shut up, shut up. Those who insult loving their God. parents should be put to death. This is the punishment. Jesus loves you. Shut up, shut Jesus up, shut 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 up. <laughs> While your God, Allah, in the Quran, He threatened the Christians. If they don't believe in Islam, Allah is going to make their faces without nose and without eyes. And we don't believe in Islam, and nothing happened like this until now. For your God is a false God. Is that true? Okay, so who killed the babies? Who killed the babies? God. Who killed the babies? God. In Bible. In God. Bible. God. And God killed the baby in your Quran too. Isn't it he who killed in the in the time of Noah, you idiot? You are an idiot. Isn't who is isn't you who believe in the flood the of Noah? Do you believe in the flood of Noah or not? You believe. Do you believe you in the believe flood of Noah or not? Yes person. or no? Yes or no? Guys, look with me. This guy. Let us talk about the curse. This is a prophet of God. He cursed, and what happened? That his curse always been answered by God. This is the God of Islam, chapter four, verse number forty-seven. The stupid God of Islam is cursing the Christian, saying, "If you don't believe in me, I will make your faces without noses, without mouth, without eyes." And we never saw any Christians that happened to him. So, what kind of God? Your God is the one who cursed will, the Christians. It will happen. It will happen. No, 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 no. It's not going to happen. He said, "No, no. You have to believe now. Read it. Read Abdul. Read it, Abdul. It says now, now. If you don't believe now, now, do you see it? Now you have to believe. Otherwise, aren't you aren't you aware that if you don't believe now, we now are going we are going to make your faces without without a mouth? What is in the bracket? What can? Is not in the Quran. Listen. Answer. And let me ask what you a question, Abdul. Let me get you busted. What about we read the interpretation for the verse? What is in the bracket? Do you like? In the do you like? Do you like to answer? Do you like to read the interpretation for the verse? Interpretation is a human interpretation. Okay. Ah, it's not the so so your prophet is not a human. He is God. So what do you mean it's a human? Aren't you a human too? Yeah, I'm a human. So how you explain yes. the Quran? If a human are yes. not allowed yes. to explain the Quran, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Did you hear this? Did you hear this idiot? Did you hear this idiot? A Muslim, if he is a human, is not allowed to inter to give interpretation for the Quran. So what is the interpretation is made for? If only only the one who is not a human can give interpretation. So what do you mean it's a human interpretation? It Those it are your opinion. Abdul, listen. Opinion. What opinion? Give me give me your opinion. Based on is opinion. give me an opinion is a trustworthy, not an opinion of a kid from Pakistan who do not know how to read Arabic. Do you know Arabic? No, I don't know. So just, then, then how you know that this is wrong? Do you know that how you know that the opinion of the scholars are wrong right away? You're a scholar, your you, your Majesty, right are, away you decide that this fallible. is wrong. They are fallible. They they all could be wrong. Okay, then give me one you trust him. Give me one they you trust. Give me give me a scholar you trust. Which one you want? A Jalalain, Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari. They all. Oh, all, all of them they are a scumbag like you. Yeah, on. shut up, get lost. This is how we get you busted, Muslims. The curse of Elijah happened immediately. The curse of Allah never happened, for he is a liar. When your God he threatened the Christians if they don't believe in Muhammad, in Muhammad, in his time, not later, he's speaking to the Christian at that time. What he will make their faces after they die. He called to make fun of a curse. You make fun of your parents in the Old Testament, your punishment is death. And this is a profit for those people. So they will be put by the law to death. He did not kill them. He did not touch any of them. While you Muslims burning people alive. God he sent, God he take. The flood of Noah is in the Quran. Did Allah kill all the babies at that time? Yes. So why the Muslim don't complain? <laughs> Your God, is, who is the one who killed the babies? <laughs> Stupid idiot. Don't you Muslims believe 
that two cities in Lut, in the story of Lut and his wife, they are burned? Did Allah burn them all? Yes. <laughs> you know, stupid. They don't even know what is in their books. But here, actually, very clear example. As long as the Muslim believe that this is what happened in that verse, that the curse happened and those children, they've been killed. Here we go in the front of you. And about killing children. If we go in the Quran, we will find the very verse in the Quran speaking about the Prophet, his name is Al Khudr. In the story of Al Khudr, he was walking with Musa and they saw a child. Chapter 18, you can read it from verse number 60. 60 says uh, 76 to verse number 80. Let us go and see the interpretation. He is calling me to speak about killing children. This is the point, right? Let me show you how we stupid those Muslims who have no idea what is in their Quran. I never saw what um, any Muslim he knows what is in the Quran. And then he will say to me, Ah, this is an opinion of a scholar, opinion of a scholar. So who we will take your opinion, you idiot? For sure, we will take the scholars, not you. So if we go in the Quran. We will find this in chapter 18 verse number 76 we go 76 and 80 let us go from before from the beginning of the story Read with me carefully, guys. This is a prophet Moses and the prophet Al Khadr. Al Khadr is the master of Moses, which means he is the teacher of Moses. And Allah sent Moses to learn from Al Khadr. Al Khadr is a person who was called Al Khadr because he drank from the fountain of youth, which means because of that he never died. He is a person who met Adam, he met Noah, he met Moses, and he was in the funeral of Muhammad. This is one of the fiction stories of the stupid Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Here, when Al Khadr with Moses were walking, Hey Ali, how are you? Let hello? me hello, hello. Can you read with me, please, Ali? What can you read with me? What is uh, in the screen? Do you know that in your Bible? Blah, 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 blah. Can you read with me in the uh, screen or not? Can you read with me what Wait. is in the screen? Yes or no? Wait. Hmm. What happened? So they set off after leaving the ship. They find a boy. Read, read. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Read. I told you. I told you. Why are you showing the tafsir? So what I will show what? I will show, show you what? Verse, show what, verse, what show I will show, verse, show you. Verse. The person in front of you. Show verse. It says then the verse in the front of you. They they killed a the boy. Here we go. This is the verse. I'm showing the verse. What's wrong show with you? Are you stupid or what? Show I'm showing the show verse the in the verse. screen. It's in the screen. If you are a donkey, you do not know how to read this your problem. Chapter, listen, Abdul, chapter 18, verse number 74. Read it for us and show and read the interpretation. Why? Well, I, I will read the words. I will not read the interpretation. Uh, then then the get lost. Don't call me. I have no time for kids. Who are you to, to not to read the interpretation? If you don't want the interpretation, why you have interpretation? Suddenly, the interpretation of the scars, you see, if you debate Muslims, you say, oh, you have to read the interpretation. You can't give interpretation of your own. Okay, we are showing them their own interpretation. They're scholars. Suddenly, their scholars are a bunch of idiots. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to read the reason. Don't read the interpretation. I read it. <laughs> As if it's going to make a difference. Brother, do you know that the Bible says kill the babies? Do you know Bible? Brother, do you know? <laughs> do you know the Bible? Can you? Do you have the courage to read for me Second King, brother? <laughs> Do you have the courage to read for me from Second King? Do you have the balls? Brother Sita, if you are the Christian, to read it from Second King. As an example, in Second King, it said, kill the babies. Prophet Elida, he killed the babies that and the other killed them. What a bunch of idiots.
Elijah did not kill anyone. Look at this. Look at this. Read carefully. So they set after leaving the ship, making their way on foot until they met a boy who had not yet reached the property playing with other boys, among them, among whom his face was fearest. Yeah, so fearest. And he, Al Khadr, slew him by splitting his throat with a knife while he lay down, or by tearing his head off with his hand, or by smashing his head against the wall, all which are different opinion. You see, the Muslims, they are different opinion about how he killed them. Some scholars, they say no by a knife. Some, they say no, he smashed his head. Some, they say he was playing belly ball with it. And according to etc., he slew him. He used, he used here because it indicate that his slain took place after encounter. The response of Itha, Itha, <laughs> he's slaughtering him like a sheep. Adha, Adha, Adha is a slaughter for sacrifice. All right, and then you know he continues saying, he Moses, to, he said to him, "Have you slain an innocent soul?" So Musa said to Al Khadr, "What's wrong with you? This boy, he did nothing. Why you slow him?" So look what happened here. Uh, Al Khadr, he said to him, "I told you, you have no patience. You cannot. You don't have patience. You cannot stay with me." And remember, Musa was sent to Al Khadr so he will learn from him. And Al Khadr is a man who was given all the knowledge and the wisdom by Allah. If we go to verse number eighty, we will find the following. Now he is telling us why he slew the boy. Look at this. As for the boy, his parents were believers. They are Muslims. The parents are Muslims. So this is the boy who is a Muslim. And we feared lest he should overwhelm them and with insolence and disbelief. For he is a described by the hadith of a Muslim. He was incredibly, incredibly what, disposed to disbelieve. And had he lived longer, this you know this if this child he live longer he will leave Islam and he will oppress his parents by leaving Islam so what we do we kill him do you see how sick this is stupid religion what is dangerous about this statement and this is the Quran this is not the interpretation the Quran is saying and the, and the and the boy his his family they were believers so we fear that he was going to harass them and cause them trouble so what we do we kill them he did not curse his family he did not do anything to his parents yet he's a boy he fear he look at his face he don't like his face so what we do we slaughter him and the one is taking talking is Allah, and the one is explaining is the scholars. And what is dangerous about this cult that based on this, that anyone can kill anyone in the street because he is thinking that maybe he when he grow, he is going to be a disbeliever. Which means Al Khadr, he claimed that Allah told him that this person or this boy. Is a suspicious to him, so you better kill him. And supposedly, Musa says he was a stupid for asking this question, so he was saying to him, Ah, huh, I told you you will not be to be with me. Huh? You are being stupid now. At the end, by the way, you will see in the chapter how Al Khadr kicked Musa out. He failed. Musa could not graduate from the school of Al Khadr, for he have no patience. So the Muslim Abdul. Is calling us to make fun of a verse in the Bible, but he is the same as the camel who do not know what he carry in the top of him. Are you guys getting the point? So what we learn from this story, and thank you for mentioning to our second king, that the prophet of God's in Judaism and Christianity, if they pray to God, their prayers will be answered. In Islam. Your God himself, not the prophet. He said, you Christians, if you don't believe in Muhammad, we are going to make your faces without mouth, without 
knows is. The same as we did to the people of the Sabbath. The people of the Sabbath, he did not do that them uh, after life. He did that to them immediately. So this was a false prophecy, false threat of a false prophet. He threatened the Christians, if you don't believe in me, Allah will make your face have no nose, no face, no face at all, no eyes, no mouth. And we did not see any one Christian, not even single one, that happened to him. And that is the difference between a prophet like Elijah and a false prophet like Muhammad. Did you get, guys? Did you get the, the did you get the, the the point? Do you see the difference? This is Elijah, amazing prophet, one of the best prophets. How dare you even to laugh at this man? How dare you go and read about him? This is a real prophet, not a womanizer, women chaser, child molester, rapist, killer like your prophet. And this is your God. It threaten us if we don't believe in Muhammad in the time of Muhammad. That he will take our face from recognition. We will have no nose. We will have no face. If we go to the interpretation for this verse, just to show you so we can love more. Chapter 4, verse number 47. Just for a love. The Muslim he thought he have something against Christianity. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Do you have the balls to read? <laughs> All right. Oh, you who have been given the scripture, believe in what we read in the Quran, confirming what is with you. How he is confirming what is with us? I thought what is with us is corrupt. Hmm. Of the Torah before we liberate faces, erasing the eyes and the noses and eyebrows. Like, what kind of curse this curse is? What is that? I mean, what the heck is that? He will make the human being without faces, without eyes, without nose, without mouth? Is that for real? And what is stopping Allah from doing that? Hmm? He is saying to them, remember carefully, if you go in the verse here, because a Muslim he might say to you, Oh, this is in the judgment day. Hold on, Abdul, skip it. Read with me. What judgment day? In judgment day, you cannot believe again. That's it. Your prophet he said, A, a person he have a chance till his soul reach his throat. Which means after that there's no chance. There's no chance to believe. So here it says, Believe, believe in what we sent to you before, before we change the faces. So the, when the belief have to happen, before they die. And I can show you what your prophet said. You cannot believe after you die. After you die, that's it. There's no choice. You want to believe, you don't want to believe, that's it. So before before we do that, before we change your faces, believe. So the belief have to happen first before they die. Then the threat have to happen before they die too. <laughs> what a scam. Then he continue. <clears throat> I like it. I like it to be with eyebrows. Unbelievable. That would be fun. I would be like a genie. Genie in the ball. Mm. And then and turn them inside out. Inside out. Our eyes and our nose will turn inside out. What does that mean? Guys, do you read with me? I mean, this is something. Allah will turn our eyes and our... <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Imagine guys, your eyes is inside out and your nose is I got the in I, I, I got the idea of the eyes inside out. I did not get the idea of how to make my nose inside out. What does that mean? I will have <laughs> Uh, and uh, he he was serious. Believe in me now, huh? Believe in me. Otherwise, Allah is going to make your faces like this. Okay, well, where where is Allah and where is the curse? Here we go. This is Elijah. This is Elijah. He just said. He made a prayer to God, and right away what he said, come to be true. Those children they've been punished. This is your God. He made a threat. You better believe. Now, before I take your nose out. So how you explain to me, Abdul, that your prophet, God, cannot make his curse come true? As an example, just another, another example of the scam of Islam. The God of Islam, he said, that those who did fishing in Saturday, Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys. How many million Jews they do fishing in Saturday these days? Can you show me one Jew? He went out for fishing in Saturday. He came back as a pig. Or only Allah, he cursed people who we never saw and no witness for the story. Do you see how stupid the story is? And yet he said to you, do you have bulls? Your prophet don't have bulls. The Quran says that. If we go to the chapter of Al-Kawthar, at the end of the Quran, Muhammad, his God, he made a special chapter for his bulls. A man, he accused the prophet that he cannot make babies. So Muhammad, he made a chapter saying, Allah, he gave me a river. A river which is white like milk white like milk what is that a river of sperm hmm? a river of a sperm Muhammad he will get a river alone in the in the heaven this river is called al kawthar okay and what else verse number two the whole chapter is three verses guys imagine God God he sent a fax Saying three sentences. So pray to your Lord and slaughter. Sacrify. Why do you want to sacrifice? I thought Muslims should not sacrifice. Sacrifice to God for what? Huh? For what reason? Hold on. Verse number three is going to tell us the reason. Lu, it is the insulter. The one who despise you and not though who without prosperity, he will be without family, children. Okay, hold on. Guys, did you see what happened? In the story of Elijah, Elijah, he prayed to God, God punished who insulted Elijah. In the story of Muhammad, Allah, he is sending a song to insult the one who insult the prophet <laughs> why Allah did not punish the guy who is saying to the prophet you cannot have babies because you don't have a penis is that correct guys instead of Allah making this is this this is this is a fight street fight like okay the one who insult you he is the one who don't have a penis ah, 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 ah. this is what this verse is about what do you mean this guy he have many kids the one who made fun of Muhammad he have a family it's Muhammad who cannot have kids so why Allah don't make Muhammad have kid or at least punish that guy make him die immediately The verse you showed us about Elijah proving that Elijah is a prophet of God and this verse in the front of us here we go somebody is insulting Muhammad claiming that Muhammad have no balls what Allah do he said to him no he is the one who have no balls your balls is fine I will give you a river in the heaven don't worry be happy 
and as long we are talking about balls guys do you remember the story of the the rock who stole the clothes of Moses do you remember how come how come anyone insult other prophet in Islam Allah right away he make a miracle for them and if somebody insult Muhammad nothing happened read with me Abu Huraira reported, yeah, what reported, okay, uh -huh, that Allah Messenger, peace upon him, said, uh -huh, what he said, Allah the Prophet said, by Allah, nothing forbid Musa to take bath along with us. The Jews, they said that. He's reporting what the Jews said. But he is suffering from sacrotal harina. Sacrotal harina. He have a problem with his balls. Let us make it simple. He Moses once went for a bath and placed his clothes on a stone and the stone moved on with his clothes. Moses after it ran after it saying, Oh stone, oh my clothes, oh stone, oh my clothes, oh stone, oh my clothes. <laughs> what a cartoon. <laughs> Question How come a guy he accused the prophet with his balls and his penis and Allah did not send a miracle like this to him? I mean, why? What's wrong? Elijah have miracles, Moses have miracles, Jesus have miracles. When it's come to Muhammad, Allah he same in the verse says, Allah will give you a river in the heaven. And the one who's insulting you, he is going to have no kids, but he have kids. <laughs> and I find the story by the way it's a true story me myself and in the Middle East those things happen always I, I will prove it to you if you notice here with me in the story when Moses he chased after the after the the, uh, the rock stole his clothes Moses he ch chased the stone and you will notice that the Jews not even one of them he was amused about stone is running look look Moses was chasing the stone, screaming, saying, Oh stone, my clothes, oh stone, my clothes. Benu Israel, which means children of Israel, had the chance to see the private parts of Moses. By the way, how many private parts we are talking about? Mm, his anus, his balls, his penis. And this is how Allah defend the Prophet. Allah, he defend the Prophet by making everybody see me naked in the street. So Allah don't want the Jews to insult Moses by saying he have uh, something in his balls. But isn't it, this is an insult to make a man run after his clothes in the street? Everybody will make fun of him. Remember, this is not in the desert. If Moses was in the desert and there's nobody, who care? You are by yourself anyway. This is a story about him running in the middle of all the children of Israel, children, women, boys girls old adult everybody was looking at the testicles of Musa and say wow look at this <laughs> mean Ooh, I wish I have like this I wish may Allah make my wish come true <laughs> but the most funny part of the story that the Jews not even one of them was wondering how the stone run Everybody was looking at the testicles of Moses and look like the testicles of Moses are, are more important than the running stone as an incident. <laughs> Imagine for the first time in your life you see a naked man and a stone is running. Which one is going to be more amazing? The stone. I mean, naked man, we can see a naked man. You can get naked yourself. A stone is running and not even one of the Jews, he said, how this happened? The only only answer for at that time stones used to run normally it was like a normal thing happened every day to the point nobody noticed the stone is running everybody is looking at Moses oh, man look at Moses brother look at his private parts parts where is the private parts start in Islam how many of them did anyone take a selfie <laughs> Moses is so lucky at that time nobody have a phone otherwise he would be so famous in YouTube 
and this is how Allah defend Musa. Imagine somebody accuse somebody that he have a problem with his balls. Allah will will open the camera in your computer and expose your balls to a ten million people from the Jews, so you can prove to them that your balls is fine. This is how funny when a Muslim he called to make fun of the Bible. They don't know what is written in their books. They have no idea. And you know, for me, I'm not going to waste time when somebody says, I don't care for the scholars. You don't care for the scholars, I don't care for you. I am here to debate scholars, not kids. The second a Muslim he says to you, I don't care what the scholars they say, there's no need to talk to him. Because if the scholars are not the one to consider Islam, so who is the one to consider you? I don't even know how to read two words in Arabic. Balls. Look like we are speaking about balls for the last hour. And here's the one, by the way, you see, you Muslims, when you call me, you better be careful about what, what, what you say. You are the one who says to me, do you have balls? No, I don't have balls. Do you? <laughs> do you have balls? Do your God have a balls? Do Allah have balls? The answer is yes, and I can prove it from the Quran. Who is a Muslim right now there to call me to prove if Allah have balls or not? Anyone? Anyone? Allah in the Quran, not only he says he can have sex, he, he, he told us he will have sex with who? He will have sex with the whore. The whore which Zakir Naik said to us, no man or no genie have sex with them. Allah will have sex with the whore. If Allah don't have balls, he will have sex with them using what? His nose? How Allah will have sex with the women? I, I change any Muslim to tell me what is the solution, what he will do. How God, his name is Allah, is saying to us, if I want to have a wife, I will take her from the black-eyed women. You tell me how he would do it. Both of them, they are right, boys. You are right. <clears throat> Do you have the boys to read for me what you written in King Second King? <laughs> you know, when the Muslims speaking about killing children, they believe in the flood of Noah. They believe in what happened to Lut. That God he burned cities. It's in the Quran. And you know, and, and yet they want to talk about this guy he cursed those children and they killed. Really? <laughs> when the Muslims they came to the Prophet and they told him during the attack, we attacked the 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 the, 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 the one uh, the Christians and the Jews, we are killing their children. He said, so what? They are from them. They are from them. Kill them, so what? Do we have any Muslim who dare to call me? But not to say, I don't care for the scars. If you don't care for the scars, you have to give me something. You have to give me someone who can explain the Quran. Don't tell me I don't care for the scars. Anyone? Hey guys, don't ask me about Shabi Ali. I don't know. I, I offer him to debate me. The coward, he will, he will not do it. And he will never do it. What I can do? Those, you know, those people, they are looking for a show. They are not looking for a real debate. Five minutes for me, five minutes for you. You say nothing, I say nothing. Everybody go home. A debate is written already in the computer a month ago. A preset topic. You see, when the, this guy Rohi come, I don't prepare for anything. 
honest to God, I prepare for nothing. It doesn't matter what he say, we talk about it. I never prepare for anything. Before I start, you know, I think about what we'll talk about today. In a second. Okay, this is a topic. If a Muslim call me right now and he decide to change the topic, we will change the topic. Like now, this guy, he just called us and he want to spoke, speak about killing their children. So, okay, we will go and talk about it. No problem. Let us talk. But the stupidity of the Muslims is amazing. If you believe that this is wrong, that a prophet of God cursing those who they are insulting him is bad. How come your prophet, he cursed everybody and nothing happened to them? How come your God is threatening the Christians and the Jews that I'm going to take your nose away? I will make it upside out, inside out. I will make your eyes come out. I will make you without faces and nothing happened. What kind of God this God is? Obviously, this God is a false God. A true God is the one who keeps his promises. <clears throat> Any Abdul? Yeah, I have no problem. Any Muslim can call me right now and you choose a topic of your concern. Just be careful. The second you choose a topic, we will not change it until we finish it. Deal? Is that a deal, guys? You choose a topic. You promise you will not change it. Including making fun of the Bible. I have no problem. Call and make fun of the Bible. Let us see. Let us see how good are you. Any Muslim? This religion is a religion of stupidity. God, you know, the Muslims, the funny, the Muslims, they speak about logic. Like God, he want to give you in this private part, it's logic. God will give you 80,000 little boys to serve you in heaven, it's logic. God will give you 80,000 women, their legs is open, it's logic. All of this is logic. All of this is very logical. Women have a sperm coming from their ribs is logic. It's scientific. One of the most uh, lovely logic I I, uh, I like about Islam is the thunder. <clears throat> if you go to chapter 13, verse number 13. Allah is teaching us about thunder. This is science. The thunder who prays by his command, it is an angel. The thunder is an angel? Are you sure? <laughs> Abdul, are you sure? Mr. Thunder is an angel? Nice to meet you, Thunder. How are you doing? And it's also said, it is the voice of the sky. It's also said. So is it an angel or not? And so do the angels. And also... The angels they praise for a we of him. The angels have a we toward Allah. He launches the thunderbolt, i.e., fire, and submits with them whom he will. He destroy by means of fire whoever he will. Do you want me to show you what the Muslims they have in the top of their grave of the Prophet? Huh? Let me show you the picture. Where is the picture? Hold on. As long as Allah, he hit only those he hate with his thunder. So why you Muslims, you have in the top of the grave of your prophet, a thunder protector? Let me see where is the picture. Here we go. <laughs> Allah, guys, Allah, he hit those who they are kuffar with the thunder 
the bad ones he punished them with his thunder whoever he will okay why Allah will and he keep destroying that the the, the 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 grave of Muhammad you see they have in the top of his grave this building do you see the cable and actually this picture is taken by a guy who left Islam he went there and he said to himself uh, he became an atheist now he said to himself well, what this is the Prophet of Allah why you are putting the thunder cable there <laughs> Oh, no screen sorry hold on do you see it this is the grave of Muhammad they have this doom in the top of his grave do you see the cable this is a thunder ca cable to protect from the thunder because th this this grave was destroyed many many times by thunder so in order to protect it from the thunder they put the cable, but the Quran says Allah He hit with it those who He will, He wish to punish them. So why Allah wanna hit the, the grave of Muhammad? Yeah, and you know the, the funny Muhammad he said La Allahu Yahuda wa Nasara, may Allah curse the Christian and the Jews for they are building in the, in the top of the graves of their ancestors uh, like churches or temple. But the Muslim, they have the same. I am thinking that maybe this cable is coming down to the grave of Muhammad so he can charge his phone. There is no way that this cable to protect his grave. No way, no way, no way. It must be for different purpose. Maybe just to charge the battery. Uh, yeah, for, you know, this is gonna be to protect the prophet grave. No way, no, I don't believe it. Allah will protect him. This is the prophet. Allah, he have the name of Muhammad over his chair, which means there's no more important person to Allah more than this. Are you kidding me? Hmm? True story. <clears throat> I don't talk about the cable TV porn, please. You know, once, guys, in the Middle East. This is many years ago. Uh, I went in my parents' house. You know, in the Middle East, we have, like, houses is made from concrete, you know? So I went in the top. We have, like, um, in the top, like, you have a place where you can sit. We have a flowers, roses. So I went to the last uh, roof in the building. And I look around me. Everybody in the roof is a change in the direction of the satellite. Everybody. And you can see from far away, we're building high, you know. And I was saying, like, what happened? I went downstairs. I asked them, is the satellite working? They said, yeah, it's working. So I don't know why. I mean, why people, they are working, everybody. And then after that, I went out, you know. I saw a bunch of guys in my age. You know, we were young, like teenage. And they said, do you know what happened today? I said, no, I don't know what happened. They said the porn stations, they changed. They are not in that satellite no more. <laughs> and then I know why. Because everybody is turning the satellite to different direction because now the direction they have, have no porn. Everybody. <clears throat> The, the direction we have, they have a Christian stations, Islamic stations, uh, uh, CNN, Fox News, you know, like there's many TV stations. But the porn, they move it. It's not there no more. The whole city is moving to the different satellite. That's it. But if you go in the Middle East, you will see that nobody speak about decency and honor. As much as they do, and I'm speaking about my people. I'm not talking about you know people from different world. You know, I'm talking about my people. Hypocrisy there is like is the is the lifestyle. In the street, everybody's speaking about the porn. When when they wanna play like they are the believers, everybody he have a dot in his forehead. He's a sheikh and he's a believer and he's a he's a hajji. You know, he's coming from the coming from hajj, coming from Mecca.
يا ستلايت قبلة You go to Saudi Arabia You will find a Bedouin He have a tent He don't have a, He don't have anything A tent He don't have a refrigerator He don't have But he have A satellite Actually Because of those stations And this is true Because of the stations A lot of people there They are divorcing their wives What happened You know He go and watch those TV And they see those beautiful girls Etc And then he go to the bedroom And his wife She don't look exactly the same so get divorced and they fly right away they go to thailand they go to those countries you know the sex tourism and they try to get uh, what they can get in islamic countries right now especially like saudi arabia kuwait bahrain emirat qatar etc you will see they have a very high percentage of women they could not find somebody to marry them because those men now they have money so what they do why he want to marry a woman from Saudi Arabia? He go, he jump to Al-Bosnia. Beautiful, poor girls. For $20,000, he get brand new, beautiful women. It's, it's slavery. It's, it's, you know, human trafficking. He get four of them. Five, six, seven. He marry four, and the rest, he bring them as servants for the four. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> in news, 350,000 people, they prayed in Al-Aqsa yard in, in the night of Al-Qadr. Anyone remember what is the night of Al-Qadr? But by the way, nobody knows when the night of Al-Qadr is. Those people are guessing. Muhammad, he said, and just to show you how Muhammad is a hypocrite liar again. Muhammad, he claimed that he received the Quran in the night of power. Because Muhammad, he was making a false book, trying to make a rabbi music, he said something stupid. Let us, let us show you. He said, We indeed reveal this message in the night of all power. And what you will explain to thee what the night of power? Yeah, who can explain to me what is the night? Now nobody knows what is the night of power. Anyone knows? Any Muslim knows? Nobody knows. Stupid Quran. The night of power is better than a thousand moth. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Muhammad is making a point, or not a point, sorry, like a rabbi music. Stupid. In order to run the whole words. To come in the same tone you see in arabic if you read with me here carefully let me show you in arabic you notice the last letter here al qadr or or ra qadr he repeat the same word here the word shahr so in order to make it come like like if you are making a arab music you know you say today i saw a fat and i uh, uh i was i thought i am going to chase a rat and uh, I was driving a, f a car, it's called a Fiat, but there's no connection between the three sentences. This is exactly what happened here. So he said that it's better than a thousand moths. If we get our calculator, get your calculator and calculate what is 1,000 night equal to 1,000, sorry, a uh, month. 1,000 month, if we divide it to 12, that is 83 years. So Muhammad saying to the Muslims, if you pray in this night, is better than 83 years of a prayer. How in the world that can be true? And what is the logic? First of all, Muhammad, according to Muslim, he did not receive the Quran, all of it, in one night. It took him many, many years. So what do you mean we send the Quran in the night of power? Secondly, if you send it in the night of power or in the night when there is no power, how this night will make a difference for God if God have nothing to do with time? And what is fair and what is justice? That if you pray in this night is equal to 83 years of a prayer. So a poor guy, he converted to Islam today. 
and today tonight he decided to pray so Allah will grant him a reward of 83 years of a prayer and a guy he converted to Islam next week and then he died Allah will grant him a reward and deeds for one week that's stupid you know what I mean if you pray for one night is the same as if you pray for 83 years why and the funny to make it more funny Muhammad do not know when the night of Al-Qadr is there's a hadith of Muhammad he run 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 away and he came like a rush and he arrived between the Muslims <sighs> Prophet, what's up? What's up, Prophet? He said, I just remember when the night of Al Qadr. He said, Yes, Prophet, where, where, where it is? Where it is? He said, I forgot. <laughs> Muslims, is that true? Is that a true? Is what I said is it true? Or I'm lying? Who want to call me and say you are a liar? Muhammad, he got so excited and he's running. <laughs> hey, prophet, Prophet, why you are you running? What's happening? Uh, okay, I can I breathe? I can I breathe? Hold on. Okay, okay. Prophet, what happened? What happened? Something or something wrong? He said, I just remember. I remember when the night of Al Qadr is, so I came to tell you. Okay, Prophet, so tell us. Uh huh? Okay, tell us when it is. Uh, 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 I am afraid I forgot. What? What the heck? He forgot? What? <laughs> Uh, oh boy uh, oh boy any Abdul in the in the bushes your prophet you forgot I mean so how you Muslims now you will find which one is the night of uh, of Al-Qadr Any Abdul? Hmm. Any Muslim? Who was a Muslim when I when I laugh at uh, at the Prophet Elijah? Any Muslim want to laugh at Elijah anymore? Mm. <clears throat> and just to show you how stupid the idea of celebrating this month or this night. As you know, the month of Ramadan, it changed. So sometime it is in January. Sometime it's February, March, May, April, June, July. It keep moving around the year. All right. As long as this is a night, and this night is dated, how you Muslim can celebrate such a night if it is you, the whole month is shifting? You know what I mean? Do you, guys, do you understand what I'm saying? So today, let us say today. <clears throat> okay, today is uh, uh, June eleven. Today, the Muslims are celebrating the night of power. When was the night of power last year? June first. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? And when was the night of power the year before it? And the year before it? 
and the year before it what kind of a madness a stupidity this much stupidity is is it a date is it a day and a night it is what how the night of power can be now in June and then after a few years is going to be in January <laughs> let me see let me see if I can find a calendar for the the night of uh, uh, well, first what they call it in English what they call it the night of power in English what they call it Al-Qadr let me search hold on I will find uh, the night of Al-Qadr calendar let us see if we can find something I'll try to find <clears throat> okay let's see for Ramadan then <clears throat> all right okay this is Ramadan guys look with me this is Ramadan. This is 2013. It was July 9, 2014, June 28, 15, June 2018. Uh, uh, Let me zoom in so you guys can see it better. Hold on. <coughs> Do you see it? Do you see how it changed? So now, now Ramadan started this year in May 16, finished in June 14. Next year is in May 6, June 4th, or the 4th of June will end. All right. That's mean they will go back on time every year so the night of the moon or the night of power is going to shift is going to change next year so how you can celebrate such a night if this is not a night because the, the, even the month is not a month the reason for this shifting because the uh, the the idiot muhammad and his followers they took the arabian calendar the arabian calendar have names months etc and those months are fixed however they have they used to do the same as what the Jews do what the Jews do because they are using the lunar calendar every three four years they have to fix it by adding a few days to the year so let us say at the end of every year you add a, a half day or sorry a few days so to, in order to fix this issue they have to add days it's a must because the year is not complete when the Muslims took over this calendar, they decide to change the month's location. So what was the first of the year, like now January, let us say the Muslim took over the world. So January is the first month of the year. The Muslim, they will do the same. They will keep January, but they will say, okay, it's not it's going to be the first of the year of the a Christian calendar. We will make it January is the day where Muhammad he moved out of Mecca, Al Hijra. So they change the first and the beginning of the year to the date where Muhammad he moved out. So they move the month from place to place. And by doing that, without adding days to correct it, their month is or their calendar is screwed. So Ramadan is not a Ramadan no more. Ramadan used to be in a fixed month. Most of the some some Arabic scholars they say uh, they that uh, the month of Ramadan used to be between September and October. Some they say uh, August and September. However, wherever it is, it is not what Ramadan today. As you see, Ramadan now it can be in February, it can be in July, it can be in March, 
it can be any month in the year because it keep moving in the year 2030 Ramadan will be in 24th of January in the year 2030 to 3031 in the year 2031 is going to start in December 15 will end in 13 of January so do you see how it's changing and what make it more funny by the way <clears throat> the Muslim they say to you you are celebrating Christmas but Jesus was not born in that date the Muslim they celebrate the birth of Muhammad based on this based on this calendar <laughs> which means his uh, his birthday sometime is in January sometime it is in December Sometime it's February, sometime March, sometime June, sometime July. It's demand because they are celebrating according to this calendar, which is a stupid calendar. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Any Muslim would like to call? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm not going to stay long today. I have some work to do. I have, uh, I'm working on my book. Uh, I will try to finish my book because I have a window of like 30 days to finish, 30, 30 something. Um, next month I have, a, I have a long trip, but I will keep posting videos during my trip, the same as what happened a few months ago. Uh, we might not be able to make live broadcasts, but I will try actually to do live broadcast If the internet can handle it, I would do so. Um, we have we have a good time together uh, to get Muslims to call and debate. No, I have to. I have to. It's okay. Uh, it's you know it's going to be a few weeks anyway. It's not uh, not a big deal. I'm not going to stay forever. It's just a trip I have to do from time to time. You know, and any one of you would like to invite me to his church to do seminars, let me know. That's what we do. All right. If any of you is interested and you can invite me and I do it for free I don't charge money I don't take wages for what I do and if any would like to uh, uh, like uh, support our trips feel free to make a donation what is your take on Al-Ghazafi? Al-Ghazafi is a madman it's stupid you know what you can say this guy he, uh, he, he became in a position in a country have a small population a lot of money yeah, mad the same as many of the Arab uh, a person who have no education suddenly he got control of a country very very you know very rich with a small population madness so he start having a girl and like a bodyguard they are women you know bodyguards they are women uh, he replaced the Quran by a book it's called the green book and then suddenly he became a, an Islamic preacher, you know, because he noticed that Muslims these days they like uh, those who do da'wah. So, you know, this guy is a, he's just a madman, stupid. But he's funny in the same time. Like I remember once when he said, do you know uh, Shakespeare? He, he was making a speech in Africa. He said, as an example, there's many famous people. They speak about them that they are Christian, but the fact they are Muslims. As an example, Shakespeare. Shakespeare, the true name of Shakespeare is Sheikh Isber. <laughs> Sheikh Isber. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sheikh Isber. So he was an idiot, you know, he was an idiot. And he was very useful for many. There's many people that get so rich because of him, including in Europe. You see Sarkozy, all those who come back, they used to suck his blood. This guy, he just... Tell him you are you are the hero and he will pay you right away he will give you a check tell him you are the king you know just praise him tell him something right away you know the 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 prime minister of italy the prime you know, sarkozy the president of france or all, all those you know they, they they got a lot of money from al Qazafi. and actually i believe that sarkozy he was insisting to get rid of him al Qazafi. he wanted to get killed because he's afraid that one day he will be, uh, you know, uh, exposing him with the donation he was making to him. You know what I mean? Because it was done under the table. It's a bribe, actually. 
so he wanted to get rid of him so nobody will know about it he used to invite all the kings of Africa and he said to them uh, you know he, he made them all of them vote that he is the king of Africa the king of the kings of Africa money and for every reader of those kings and leaders in Africa he give them like four or five million dollars check just say I am the king of kings of Africa but you know that in the Middle East uh, is is the, like uh, this is the case for everybody I mean uh, Saddam Hussein was the same the asset is the same if you go to those countries you will see every family there from those uh, family who control the countries they they control everything the phone companies the oil industry uh, the trade the ports the import the export the airport the customs everything in their pocket everything all of them are the same but there is degrees degrees in what in stupidity some of them they are smart they don't do what al qazafi do al qazafi was naive and educated so he was kind of a joke for everybody uh, the others are smarter but all of them are the same go and see the royal kings of uh, you know the royal families of saudi arabia emirat bahrain the same scam all of them the same <clears throat> do we have any muslim yeah he died terribly but he deserved it he killed a lot of people he tortured a lot of people you know he's a criminal you know what i mean thank you guys for those who they are making donation i i uh I don't say thank you from time to time, like I say Islam is false and the Christian princes. Thank you for, for the, the support. We appreciate it. But all of them are the same, but they have different faces and they try to present themselves in different way, different method. But at the end of the day, it's the same mentality. It's a criminal mentality. They will not hesitate to make you disappear, you and your family, if you don't agree with them. Even if you are from their family, even if you are from their family, it doesn't matter who you are. Those people, for the sake of power and money, they are willing to do anything. You see, when Saddam Hussein, the Kurdish, they went against him to keep himself in power, he used chemical weapon and he killed more than 10,000 Kurdish in one day. Just in one day. And he did not feel any guilt. I mean, what a big deal. And the Muslim did not feel any problem because he's a Muslim, killing Muslims, so it's fine. You, you see, the, the Muslims, they have mentality that if a Muslim is killing a Muslim, it's okay. As an example, the Turkish, they controlled most of the Middle East for hundreds of years. Raping the Arabian women, the Muslim women, Christian women, they, they, they killed, rape everybody everybody and the arab they never did any revolution against the turkish for very simple reason because they are muslims go and check the albanian for how long they controlled egypt as an example but they are albanian what albanian have to do with egypt the albanian they brought to egypt as slaves and then they took over the palace of the king and over the kingdom and they became the kings and they control Egypt for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and not even a single Muslim complain in Egypt why because they are Muslims when the British they came to England to, to Egypt the Muslims are went so crazy British Kuffar Christians the Albanian they are not you know they have nothing to do with them just because they are Muslim just say they are Muslim you see now if Netanyahu he convert to Islam and he he nuke Gaza not a single Muslim will complain this is the truth you see the war between what they call it Palestinian and Israel this is not about land that's false it is about religion 
everything you see around you in the Middle East is about religion. I have nothing to do with the land. The Turkish now they occupy Afrin. <clears throat> do you see any Muslim going in the street striking in England? Do you see tens of thousands of Muslims they want to go and support the Kurdish in Afrin? No. Why? Because those Turkish are Muslims. It's okay. No problem. Muslims killing Muslims. Hmm? It's all right. How many tens of thousands of Muslims went in the street against ISIS? None. Zero. Muslims, because they are Muslim. Actually, they support them. They say we are against them, but the fact they support them. And today, actually, I'm happy that uh, Trump, he met with the president of uh, Korea. Uh, because I believe that Korea, the north of Korea, is going to be soon the coming Christian country. I don't know if any of you have been in South Korea. I've been there. I've been more than once. Uh, this country used to be, uh, you can say, maybe 100% Buddha country. And actually, I went there to a Buddha temple. And I was surprised about how the Buddha they pray. I found them they pray the same exactly like the Muslims. And for sure, it's not the Buddha copying from the Muslims. It's very high possibility that the Muslims copying from the Buddha. However, in South Korea, which is a country used to be almost zero Christians, the Christians today is almost 90%. And soon is going to be 100%. So I hope Trump and the North Korean president, they will reach into agreement, and that agreement will guarantee freedom of religion. I will not be happy if they make an agreement just about uh, nuke it's going to be very very good news if they make a freedom of religion and if they do that i will make a trip to korea specifically north korea and we will see if we can do some seminars there the the problem there not many people they speak good english but we can do the same as we do like what they do in south korea we bring a translator <clears throat> so I hope I hope soon will uh, that will change and actually you know and the, the other good news too that in China you know China is coming to Christianity as something you cannot even imagine from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 50 million to 60 million to 80 million the number is is, is jumping like crazy the Chinese government, they are trying their best to control the growth of Christianity. But you cannot. You cannot. China is in fire. Good fire. China is going to be the coming giant Christian country. The biggest Christian country in the world. People like it, don't like it. It's happening. It's not going to happen. It's happening. Yeah, and sometimes persecution can do better, you know, can do best. Persecution make of us better Christians. You see, when you are a Christian, the church door is open for you anytime. And you don't go to pray because, okay, I have it, you know, for granted. But those who they are under persecution, they live different kind of life. They are better Christians than us. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, what people they hear about China is not the same as what you see there. I, I posted a video from my last trip. Remember, I think I, I don't know if you guys you saw it. I have actually many videos. I did not post any of them. Uh, uh, you know, people they hear about China. It is a communist. It's a, but you go there. There's nothing communist in China. I don't see any communist. Where is the communist? China is a weird communist country. When I say weird, I mean it. It's really weird. It's not what you think. You know, uh, our idea of a communist is like, okay, Soviet Union, where nobody own anything. Go to China, you find people, they are owning most expensive cars. Billionaire, millionaires. I mean, where is the communism there? 
know what I mean? So it is, it is, uh, uh, it's different kind of, uh, like even a government office run by, uh, like when they have a government office, the employee of this government office, they can make money legally from it. You know, it's like a, it's like a company. So it's not the communist people they think about it. However, there's no freedom. They they uh, they harass the Christians. The day I arrived last year, this year actually, to China, uh, I think it was <clears throat> which day? I don't remember. A anyway, the same day I arrived, you can check it in the internet. They destroy a huge, a huge church. And the excuse was they don't have a license, but the fact they do. They don't have a license to build it. They said they have a license from the uh, the city or whatever, blah blah blah, but not from the official federal, whatever, you know. So they made an excuse to destroy this, this church. Why? Because this church was growing so fast. So they thought if we take the church down, they destroy it literally. Let me see if I can find you the the, the news to show you how big the church is. <clears throat> And actually, always they destroy churches. Like this is not the only one you will see. Uh, here we go, January twelve in in. But I think it was January eleven, maybe. Yeah. Or oh, January ten, I arrived. I think. Do you see it? <clears throat> uh. And actually, here this one is just now. This is no, this is 2017. So look like here, June uh, 10, 2017. This one, June 14, 2018. Uh, it's a know. It was a huge church. Very big, not like something small. But that will not will not uh, will not help them. They can destroy it. No problem. But you know, it's, it's still uh, Christianity is growing. You know, if you go right now and search in churches there, you will not believe it. You will not believe it how big, how huge the church is in China. Still, you in your head you think. That this is a communist country. You know what I mean? And uh, not to forget, like Taiwan, Hong Kong, I mean, you name it. You name it. They think if they destroy a building, they can stop Christianity from growing, but that will not that will not make a difference. Christianity never been a building, never was and never be. It's not a building. We are not pagans who pray in the direction of a stone. We don't believe, we don't believe in that. You, know, you build a church in the mind and the heart of, of people around you, including your children. So you will destroy a church. You, you know, go destroy a church. All right. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, with this, it's almost seven o'clock here. I have to go and do some work in my book, and my voice is not uh, doing good these days. So I want to say thank you. I will try tomorrow to be here at four thirty as usual. Um, don't forget to tell your friends again about uh, my new book, Allah and Sex. <clears throat> Who of you did get the book already and read it? Any of you here did read the book already? Let me know, please. How you how what do you think? Especially if you read the, the two volume, not only one. All right, let me know, and don't forget to post a review in uh, in Amazon. All right, just let me know, please. Let me know if it's good. Uh, if you find that I should cover more issues, you know, I was trying not to make it so big, 
uh, just to cover the topic as much as I can. All right. Well, the title is uh, it, the title is you know simply it's it to present what is the topic. I I made the title short and let us say short and easy. Uh, for this is what the topic is, and some people they said to me it's offending. I said okay, who care? I mean I'm offending. Whatever you say about Islam, it's offending. It doesn't matter what you say. So go straight in the topic. This is what it is about. Sex and Allah. Why Muslim is a Muslim? For the sake of sex, not for the sake of Allah. If you take from Islam the heaven of Islam, there is no Muslims. As simple as that. If you take the heaven of Islam, which is women and sex and boys and, and uh, drink and wine and, you know, if you take it off, there is no ISIS. There is no Hamas. All of this is just because of the idea of sex. This is why you see the majority of those who commit suicide, maybe 99.9% of them are men. Where is the Muslim women? Muslim women who commit suicide are women, they, the Muslim, they want to kill them. What does that mean? As an example, in, in, in Hamas territory, a woman, she committed adultery. She got a breath net. Okay, we will kill you. So what do you think? We have a we have a solution. Either you go and attack the Jews and kill some of them, and we will name you as a hero, and Allah will bless you, or you die with shame. You will die, you will die. Which one you choose? So okay, she said, Okay, I will go and kill myself. At least I will bring honor to my family. Everything is about sex. This is why all those who want to die for the sake of Allah are men. Not women. For this is a cult based on sexuality. Garbage in, garbage out. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until I see you tomorrow, God is willing, at 4.30, if I can, I will be here again at 4.30 p.m. And until then, I say, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye. Thank you.